Hello. So far, we have uh, discussed about uh, Stokes flows uh, uh, and uh, flow past particles, Stokes flow past uh, uh, drops, etcetera. Um, but uh, in uh, many of the applications uh, where uh, various uh, micro particles are involved, so you come across uh, either flow past uh, micro porous particles or uh, uh, sometimes some uh, micro particles uh, sedimenting inside uh, uh, some uh, like uh, arteries etcetera. Okay. So, these are uh, some uh, uh, concepts uh, which have applications uh, uh, of uh, flow through porous media. Okay. So, today we are going to discuss uh, some introduction about uh, flow through porous media. So, when you uh, get a word like uh, porous media, so uh, uh, intuitively one can think of uh, anything which has some pores. Uh, okay. So, pores in the sense uh, some gaps. So, there is a material which is uh, interconnected, but uh, there are some gaps. So, then we call it uh, porous. Okay. So, sometimes uh, some materials you can see immediately and conclude that this is porous, but sometimes uh, by looking at it uh, you may think this may be or may not be, but then uh, when you put in uh, some fluid then you will see uh, whether it is really porous or not. That means, uh, so in the uh, latter case the, the gaps will be very compact and hence uh, with a naked eye we are not able to observe. Okay. So, let us see uh, as an introduction uh, to porous media. So, what is the basic definition and uh, uh, various examples. Okay. And uh, typically uh, when uh, flow through such uh, porous media takes place, uh, what kind of uh, physical insights one has to understand before one solves the real problem. Okay. So, uh, as I indicated uh, uh, typical example. Uh, we see in classrooms. So, these are the chalk. Uh, so, somebody can uh, obviously conclude that this is a porous and somebody may say uh, the I cannot see any pores and it is a solid, but then uh, uh, many times you see we put it into uh, water and then try to write it on the board. right? So, when you put it on water, so you can see some amount uh, uh, gets absorbed in this. Okay? So, that means there are pores and this is um, non deformable. Okay. And uh, on the other hand you have sponge. So, you can see the pores very well. What are the pores? Okay. Pores means look at the definition porous material is a material containing pores that is voids. So, these are the voids you can see. Here also you have voids, but only thing we are not able to see with our naked eye. And the skeleton portion of the material often called the matrix. So, this is the um, matrix. Okay. And these pores are typically filled with uh, fluid. So, uh, at this stage if you keep it in air, so naturally uh, air goes in, uh, then if you put water naturally water goes in. Okay. So, this is a uh, non, uh, this is a rigid porous material, whereas this is a deformable porous material. Okay. Because sponge if you apply some pressure then it gets uh, deformed. So, then as uh, we uh, get some idea if uh, you have dense particle packing. So, then if you put some uh, liquid. So, the liquid percolation inside will be little difficult, but it will it will go with uh, uh, if you wait for long time kind of. Whereas, here since you have a, a large pores, so liquid passes through very quickly. So, that means the packing here is very dense, whereas the packing here is a less dense or sparse, if not very sparse, but uh, okay. So, definitely there is some uh, uh, physical quantity that we can introduce characterizing the packing structure. So, that is nothing but porosity. So, porosity is the measure of the void or empty spaces inside a material. It can vary from 0 to 1 or in percentage 0 to 100. So, then uh, how do you measure? If uh, V void is the volume of the void and V total is the total volume, porosity is uh, the fraction. Okay. So, this is the fraction void to the total. Right. 
So, then the void space of the material is occupied by liquids or gases. Okay. So, it is a dimensionless quantity, right. So, that means, if uh, porosity is uh, 1, uh, then um, that means, uh, it is a completely uh, void. Okay. So, there is no obstruction kind of. Okay. Porosity is 0 means, uh, there is no pore. Okay. So, these are the limiting cases. So, I have given uh, two examples, one is a non deformable, other is deformable and uh, let us see a small uh, uh, video. So, we have taken a sponge and we are putting some dye. Uh, okay. So, you can see initially uh, you have pores on the sponge, but then if you put some liquid, uh, it may take some time slowly percolate, uh, because initially air and then uh, you have some uh, pore uh, spacing. So, depending on the competition between the pore space and uh, the, the viscosity, it gets. Uh, uh, then slowly you see you can, uh, uh, so this is percolating, okay. if you keep it uh, with some weight, it is uh, with uh, some gravity, it is going down. Then you apply some external force, see we are deforming. So, the tissue gets deformed and then more flow goes inside. So, initial concentration was a high and now once you apply some pressure, it is fading out. Okay. So, most of the biological materials uh, are deformable porous and then uh, various drug transport etcetera happens uh, by this kind of mechanism like. So, you have a lot of uh, pumping systems and then using deformation uh, via these pumping. Uh, the various drug uh, gets transported. Okay. So, this is just to give you an idea about uh, deformable porous uh, media. Okay. So, now uh, let us uh, look at uh, further uh, physical insights. So, once you have a uh, porous material, so then some material as I indicated flow is uh, moving very quickly, uh, but in some cases it is not. So, that means, the ease with which uh, the fluid can move inside the porous material uh, that uh, characterizes the, uh, the, the porous media. Okay. So, that is called permeability. So, permeability means the measure of uh, the, the percolation, okay, measure of the percolation and typically the SI units of permeability is uh, meter square. Okay. So, in general the units are length square. Uh, so, if it is uh, less permeable, so naturally uh, flow cannot uh, pass through very easily. If it is more permeable, flow can pass through very easily. Okay. So, again uh, the pores uh, distribution depends on the um, connectivity. Okay. So, you can see, so here uh, there are no pore spaces. Okay. So, you have some uh, particles, but uh, they are connected no pore space. Here there are pore spaces, but uh, I mean if you look at any planar diagram. So, if there is some flow, but it cannot go through because it is it is uh, not connected. Okay. These pores are not connected, but whereas here uh, pores are connected. Okay. So, there is a general uh, theory depending on the granule packing structure you get uh, different uh, permeabilities. Uh, uh, that means, uh, there is a uh, lattice uh, arrangement and the corresponding uh, relation uh, uh, one can obtain, but we are not going to those details. This will just give an idea about uh, no pore, unconnected pore and connected pores. Okay. So, now what is the next question is you have porosity, you have permeability. So, are they really connected. Okay. So, that is the next question. So, uh, to answer this uh, Karma and Kozini, uh, they have given uh, a formula. So, that is based on hydraulic radius theory. It is an empirical relation. So, where permeability is related uh, to porosity in this order, where d p is the uh, mean diameter of the grain. Okay. So, is the mean uh, diameter of the grains. Uh, well, this is not the very universal. So, there are variety of uh, ad hoc uh, 
uh, uh, alterations of this and uh, depending on the context. Uh, uh, suppose, uh, sometimes uh, somebody is considering elongated fibers okay, so in various randomized or perpendicular parallel fiber. So, bundles in that sense. So, the corresponding uh, Karman Kozini may vary and things like that. Okay. So, but this is just a generic indicator to connect permeability and porosity. Okay. So, the natural question is uh, how uh, the, the direction dependency play a role in the permeability. Suppose, uh, your fibers are very nicely organized and then uh, they are homogeneous and there is no uh, change with the direction etcetera. So, then uh, we say the permeability is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, simply isotropic that means, um, equal in all directions. So, that is what the first characterization iso means equal. So, for isotropic porous material permeability is same in all directions okay. and then uh, k which we denote it by k it is a simply a constant. Whereas, uh, in some cases uh, the bundles are arranged uh, very in a peculiar direction that means, they are nicely arranged with within a particular pattern. So, in that direction the permeability is more whereas, across the permeability is less kind of. So, that means, the permeability that is the ease of percolation is uh, depending on the direction. Okay. So, in that case uh, definitely we expect that the permeability uh, is directionally dependent and correspondingly we call it anisotropic. Okay. So, in this case uh, for example, if you take uh, typical wood we see the wood uh, uh, due to the layers of the tree, uh, we get a wood structure uh, in uh, some eccentric circles, so the layers and layers. So, that means, horizontally percolation is expected uh, uh, difficult, but vertically it may be uh, easier. So, that means, it is a direction dependent. So, this is one example, so rock you can see here anisotropy is occurring due to the orientation of the grains. So, you can see, so one would expect percolation this direction is a slightly difficult compared to percolation in this direction. Okay. So, this is one case where uh, uh, the anisotropic uh, permeability uh, is, uh, is seen. So, there are variety of uh, structures. Okay. So, if uh, such anisotropy structure is there of the soil or rock or any porous media then what will be the structure of the permeability. So, that is the next question right. So, in two dimensions uh, we are showing it. So, in this case if the porous media is anisotropic we expect that the permeability will be a matrix rather than a constant. So, these are the principal directions then you have the off diagonal directions. So, k i j means uh, along ith plane in jth direction. Okay. So, this is a for anisotropic and typically uh, it is a symmetry. Okay. Suppose, uh, one can consider what will be the corresponding uh, uh, um, dependency on the volume flow okay, of uh, the permeability. So, Darcy is the one, uh, Darcy is a, an engineer uh, who was working with uh, water works and then uh, uh, by part of uh, his job uh, once he tried to measure this uh, empirical relation. So, if you see, so this is a pipe and filled with uh, uh, some particles okay, instead of clear flow. So, then suppose at A some pressure is maintained at B some pressure is maintained and length of the pipe is L. So, typically uh, as a layman if you consider a pipe okay, of this length then what happens uh, if you have certain length and then you maintain pressure and then you want to measure velocity. So, keep the length fixed and then you change the uh, pressure. Okay. So, then naturally if you are increasing the pressure difference velocity will be increased. On the other hand keep the pressure fixed and then change the length. So, you are increasing the length then what happens velocity will be reduced. If you are decreasing the length then velocity will be higher. So, this is a general intuition. right? So, now 
what we are uh, trying to do put more particles into it. So, then what happens naturally for this pressure difference whatever maintaining you expect certain velocity to that you are putting some resistance that is uh, the particles. So, you expect that naturally the velocity will be further reduced. Then the question comes how much it is reduced it depends on the particle spacing that is the permeability. Okay. So, if it is more permeable then the velocity will be more if it is a less permeable velocity will be less. So, that is what Darcy observed. So, the total volume flux uh, is see this is the already I mentioned it is proportional to the pressure difference inversely proportional to the length that I already mentioned. Then one parameter that is depending uh, on the volume flux will depend on is viscosity. So, if it is a um, high viscous flow when we are keeping other things fixed naturally the velocity will be less. If it is a uh, uh, less viscous then velocity will be more therefore, it is a in the denominator. Then if it is less permeable volume flux is less if it is more permeable and area naturally if you are having larger pipe with everything fixed. So, then you get more area. So, this is the empirical relation. So, this can be generalized and uh, that change the complete understanding of uh, flow through porous media. So, volume flux is minus k by mu grad p where this is the pressure viscosity permeability and volume flux. Okay. So, this is um, an empirical uh, result, uh, but uh, mathematically uh, people have shown it via various uh, techniques and uh, one can quickly look at this and uh, they can correlate with uh, Fourier law temperature or Ohm's law or Fick's law of diffusion. Okay. So, that is uh, flux is proportional to some uh, gradient of a scalar. So, that is each of this law is a general indicating this. Okay. So, this is. A, so, now okay, we have uh, particles, but uh, then uh, we are saying if the particles are sparse and dense uh, uh, what is the difference. Okay. So, we expect uh, corresponding damping should change. right? So, this was thought of by Brinkman what uh, he thought. So, correspondingly uh, the surface force must vary surface force means forces acting on the surface of these particles. So, that should also contribute. So, correspondingly this is the typical Darcy law that we have seen just now. So, then Brinkman's uh, proposal is there should be a viscous uh, term and uh, this is the viscous force uh, which will contribute as a uh, as a body force uh, as a surface force because viscosity acts uh, it is more prevalent when it is uh, coming in fluid is in coming in contact with the uh, surface of these particles. So, this is the proposal by Brinkman and uh, how Brinkman has uh, proposed this is uh, considered Stokes flow past collection of particles and then uh, in uh, averaging uh, the corresponding uh, volume flux uh, obtained this. Okay. So, in uh, uh, isotropic case uh, permeability is uh, constant. So, we have this. Uh, okay one should uh, make a note of uh, this mu uh, mu prime that is given. So, what we are saying is uh, you have a fluid of some viscosity and uh, that viscosity with that viscosity it is entering a porous media. So, then we expect fluid to have similar porous media uh, uh, in within the porous media similar viscosity, but uh, typically speaking why uh, is it a uh, point uh, uh, measurement. So, that is the question because what we are saying in porous media you have a solid spacing so, uh, solid uh, uh, particles and then you have spacing. Okay. Then we are saying uh, one can measure velocity uh, a v bar given at some position, but uh, what is the guarantee that that position is really occupied by uh, the void. So, that is the question right. So, which means when we define uh, velocity or pressure in porous media 
So, it is not really uh, at a particular location, it is an averaged quantity. Okay. So, these are averaged quantities. So, and hence in a generic sense, so we are using uh, this notation. So, now when we have such averaged uh, sense, do we still expect the viscosity of the fluid uh, to have uh, same as whatever it has outside the porous media. So, the observation is uh, not and uh, the corresponding viscosity is called effective viscosity. So, that is what uh, we have uh, uh, indicated mu prime. So, typically this e effective viscosity is supposed to be different from this viscosity. Okay. So, that is a thing and there are some correlations between this. Okay, but most of the studies uh, they assume that these two are equal, okay. but uh, however, uh, if somebody would like to really capture the complete phenomena. So, they can uh, consider both different and then use uh, various uh, correlations uh, while considering a particular analysis. Okay. So, this is Brinkman isotropic as I indicated in general these are not equal. Okay. So, now let us say for an isotropic case, uh, the permeability will be a matrix. So, here we are putting 2D, uh, if you can extend to 3D. So, it will be uh, the corresponding tensor will come and then, uh, so you have the corresponding Brinkman equation. Suppose, you have k x y is uh, 0, these two and each is equals to constant. So, then uh, the matrix reduced to this, which is nothing but uh, the isotropic uh, situation. Okay. So, so far we have discussed uh, uh, how uh, the corresponding governing equations uh, when you have a fluid flow inside. So, these are empirical and then now uh, using uh, uh, various concepts uh, like uh, for example, uh, mathematical you know, homogenization theory etcetera, mathematically uh, these equations have been derived okay, from navier Stokes equation. Okay. So, that is a different story anyway. So, now let us see what happens uh, to uh, boundary conditions when you have a porous media. So, we are considering flow packed between impermeable boundary. So, you have two impermeable boundary, you have a porous uh, media and then it is uh, filled with the fluid. So, then if you would like to solve a fluid mechanical problem, what are the boundary conditions one would. Okay. So, the question is since uh, these are impermeable, so usual no slip prevails. Okay. Now, uh, this is very uh, interesting topic and uh, definitely not resolved. So, it is like see when you say you have two plates, you kept plates and then you are filled with particles. So, in this case we know that this is some uh, suppose it is x and y, you know that this is y equal to constant. On the other hand, suppose no plates, you have a stack of say pebbles, okay. you arrange like this, then you want to define the boundary. So, is it y equal to constant? So, that is the question, because uh, you, you cannot expect that the packing at the boundary will be very smooth and in line, so that you get y equal to constant. Okay. So, it depends on the packing. So, therefore, uh, this is a debatable issue. Okay. So, any case the same is uh, also true when you have a fluid uh, porous, uh, which we will uh, discuss uh, in detail later. So, for the time being when we are assuming that it is a two plates and then you have uh, some porous and these are impermeable. So, within this context we have no slip. Okay. The other case is uh, let us say you have a porous object in a fluid pool. Okay. So, then uh, uh, what happens? You have external velocity pressure in some ambient flow, then within the porous object the fluid comes and percolates within the porous object. So, you have internal velocity and pressure and this boundary is permeable. So, then what are the boundary conditions? If somebody has to solve the problem, 
here you have let us say Navier-Stokes equations, here you have a porous object correspondingly you have Darcy or Brinkman equation. So, then if you set up a boundary value problem, what are the corresponding interface conditions that is a natural question. So, let me tell you one would intuitively expect that flow quantities outside and the flow quantities inside should be interacting in some sense at the boundary. Therefore, one natural assumption uh, one can think of is a functional relation between the velocity pressure of exterior, velocity pressure interior and I put here derivatives of velocities, uh, but not pressures. Well, this is not based on any uh, any intuition. Uh, basic uh, uh, rule is typically when you have uh, uh, viscous forces interacting along a boundary. So, you have stresses come in play. Okay. So, we expect that uh, some combination of stresses also have uh, exchange, because see at the interface what happens? So, the momentum coming from the free flow is expected to be percolated into the porous media. So, there will be a momentum exchange happening between the phases. So, therefore, what uh, best can be expected is a functional combination of velocity, pressure and when I say derivative of velocities, uh, we would like to hint it as stresses. So, this is the general structure. Okay. So, this is still not resolved, okay. uh, but Bever Joseph is the first one uh, for unidirectional flow. Suppose, you take a fluid flow and then you have a porous bed. Okay. So, then uh, let us say this is impermeable, so no slip prevails then this is free fluid flow. So, therefore, free flow. So, velocity profile can be expected like this, but then uh, since this is permeable. So, velocity is not coming and becoming 0 here, but uh, due to some uh, uh, flow seepage into the porous media. Uh, so, you have such profile is expected. Okay. So, uh, what will be the exchange here happening. So, Bever Joseph has proposed the following. So, the fluid velocity with the corresponding normal derivative is proportional to the relative velocity. So, this is fluid velocity and this is velocity in the porous media and the proportionality is such that there will be a constant okay, alpha and then uh, here it is a uh, root k. Okay. So, this is permeability uh, k is a permeability and root k and alpha is a slip coefficient. So, this uh, is expected to uh, in some sense behave depending on the structure of the porous media. So, that is what I indicated. So, this is the dimensionless and is independent of the viscosity of the fluid, but depends on the material parameters. For example, uh, you have a uh, fluid layer on a wood then fluid layer on a sand bed. So, then this slip coefficient is expected to be different. So, again this is uh, uh, empirical where Joseph has given this relation. Okay. So, then uh, when we come to general case the same can be extended Bever Joseph. What we want to say is normal velocity is expected to be continuous, whereas in case of the tangential velocity you expect such a slip. Okay. So, this is a treated as a slip condition. Okay. So, this is the slip condition of Bever Joseph for a general case. So, now you take Stokes Darcy. So, this whole thing is at a Stokes Darcy coupling. Okay. Suppose, you take a Stokes Darcy system, what are the full set of boundary conditions? Normal velocity is continuous, tangential velocity as indicated by Bever Joseph and then these are not sufficient, because you have a Stokes equation which is second order and then Darcy equation uh, first order. So, you require one more boundary condition. So, that is expected to be normal stress, but uh, Darcy is a is a potential flow, because u is minus grad p. So, there are no 
uh, stresses in there. Okay. So, corresponding normal stress means just the pressure and that must be equal to the uh, corresponding normal uh, fluid uh, stress. Okay. So, that is what is happening. So, this is the uh, Darcy pressure and this is the fluid pressure in the free flow region. So, these are the set of uh, uh, typically accepted boundary conditions at a Stokes Darcy. Okay. Now, when you replace Stokes Darcy by Stokes Brinkman, what do you mean by Stokes Brinkman? What I am trying to say is you have such configuration. So, this is porous and this is free flow. Okay. So, suppose you have Brinkman equation in a in a domain porous domain and then here Stokes what happens at the interface. So, that is the question we are asking. Okay. So, for this configuration what we are uh, trying to uh, discuss these are the corresponding interface conditions one would expect. So, you have continuity of normal velocity then tangential velocities uh, not slipping as Bever Joseph expected, because this uh, Bever Joseph slip is typically due to the Darcy equation. But since uh, we have a both higher order equations that is uh, Stokes is second order and Brinkman is second order. So, we have the corresponding continuity of the velocities and the continuity of uh, uh, normal stress and tangential stress uh, have been. Okay. So, so, this is a typical uh, of uh, the uh, Stokes Brinkman coupling, but uh, the question to be asked is uh, these are universally accepted or uh, the, the exact interface conditions at a porous liquid interface is uh, resolved so, that is a question to be asked. Unfortunately, uh, till today that is not resolved, because the reason that I have mentioned. So, there is no crisp boundary when you have a porous bed the particles are irregularly. Okay. So, you whatever you are defining y equal to constant. So, that is not. So, you, you have particles which are okay, irregularly. So, therefore, depending on the particle spacing. So, that means, one is expected to take a some kind of a boundary layer. Then you take it into account of this boundary layer and then uh, try to uh, pose valid boundary conditions. Okay. So, this is uh, Stokes Brinkman coupled conditions. So, this is very interesting and very challenging uh, issues. So, this is not uh, resolved yet. So, there is a lot of research happening. However, uh, Ocha Tapia recently uh, proposed that stress there will be a jump in the stress. So, you can see uh, this is effective viscosity and then uh, this is a tangential velocity with a normal derivative. So, the difference between uh, the corresponding uh, uh, quantities is uh, again uh, this is viscosity and the root of the permeability and uh, uh, proportional to the tangential velocity in the porous media and this is called a stress jump coefficient. Okay. So, this stress jump coefficient uh, is a non dimensional scalar quantity which according to Ochatapia should depend on the again like a Bever Joseph condition uh, this depends on the structure of the uh, porous media. Okay. So, material properties. So, one can refer uh, for more details, okay. but uh, uh, the issue is not uh, settled, uh, because uh, how one can estimate this. So, Ochatapia has uh, uh, considered a volume averaging approach and given some estimates for beta. Uh, however, various uh, uh, people use uh, some others use this set of boundary conditions some others replace continuity of uh, uh, tangential stress with this. Okay. So, to summarize for a unidirectional flow uh, these are the popularly 
uh, accepted conditions. So, this is a um, uh, velocity continuity and this is velocity gradient. Okay. So, then uh, uh, this is a corresponding condition given by Waffa and, and, and uh, Tyagaraja is uh, effective viscosity multiplied by the shear rate of uh, porous uh, velocity. Okay. So, corresponding to the fluid and then uh, this is the Watsathapia. So, this is the recent. So, a lot of work uh, using this uh, is happening, but as I indicated uh, the exact set of uh, uh, interface conditions at a porous liquid interface are not yet resolved. But uh, whatever the interface conditions we have discussed are generally universally accepted and uh, whenever we solve problems we adopt one of them depending on the algebra and depending on the physical problem. Okay. So, in coming uh, lectures we discuss uh, some problems. Thank you.